Hello everyone and welcome to a bit of an off-the-cuff video. Uh, I'm currently building two command bases for my Gallic Wars project. I've got a big game coming up at the Plastic Crack Podcast Gaming Day. Um, I'm doing the Battle of Gagovia and I need another Gallic and another Roman command base. So I thought I'd switch the camera on as I'm building it up after each process and sort of log how I'm getting on. I'm going to be using this figure of Vercingetorix by Warlord Games. This is a metal figure, and as you can see, I've pretty much finished painting him. There's still a few details I have to uh, finish off, and I've kind of gone for a bit of a stereotypical Gallic look of, well, you know, kind of, I think, what everyone thinks Vercingetorix look like. Um, it's definitely a chunky model, a lot chunkier than, uh, than this one, which is the standard bearer that I'm going to put on the base with him, which is also from Warlord Games. Um, I quite like the fact he's holding a head, so I'm going to have a Roman body to go with him. Now I've got to do a Roman command base as well so I'm going to use the free figure I got from the Gallic Wars supplement um, from the, I think it's called Defend the Eagle. Um, I figured this guy standing at the back with a bunch of sort of Romans who are sort of, you know, falling around him um, as he sort of raises the eagle up would look pretty cool. So the whole idea behind this is to build something up that, that looks fairly impressive. There's quite a lot going on on the Vercingetorix model, so I'm not sure if I'll add any more figures than these two. And as you can see, there's a bit of a size difference between them anyway. So I'm going to have to do a bit of force perspective um, on the base. Um, I think that I will probably put this dead miniature on the base. I've already kind of snipped the head off so it looks like that standard bearer has the head and I'm going to be using um, the normal wiggly edge bases I get from big red bat bases and these are just left over Romans, uh, Caesarean ones from the various sprues I've been using and in fact I didn't have um, one arm left so I'm going to be using this guy as casualty. I'll just be putting a shield over that shoulder. So the next thing I've got to do is really just finish painting up all of these models. Um, I've got these arrows which I got out of a peri sprue. I just got them sort of lying around and I got a spare spear from the ghouls. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go away and paint all of these up and I'll come back to you in a few days once they're ready to put on the base. Right, it's been a couple of days and I've only really been working on these in the evenings, um, but I got there so I thought I'd switch the camera on now and show you where we are. So here you can see the arrows and the uh, the javelin that I finished off, I mean they're, they're pretty straightforward. I want to sort of pepper the ground around the Romans with arrows and spears. This is the dead Roman for the Gallic base. I was actually really pleased with how the flesh came out on this one. I didn't really spend particularly long on it. And I, I know it looks a bit gory, but I didn't really think there was a way to make it look not gory. I finally finished off the standard bearer here and I've added some extra layers onto his cloak to just try and build that up a little bit and just make it stand out. And I've kind of gone over the stripes on the trousers to make them stand out a bit as well. Final gold details on Vercingetorix have been completed and that was all I needed to do on him. Now, this model was actually really, really fun to paint. Now, there's a bit of a casting issue on his left arm, but I don't really think you can notice it. And I'm really pleased with how it's come out. Um, there's really nice crisp details on here, and I, I think he's going to look very, very cool standing at the back. I did have to go and look at some pictures of what a, uh, a one of these lion sort of headdresses would look like, but I think it's come out well. The transfers on the shields are made for these uh, Warlord miniatures by Little Big Man Studios and then I've used additional pigments and weathering to just sort of offset how sort of bright they can be. In fact, the method that I use on these Romans is the same one that I did in the, uh, the painting uh, guide for these guys and I will leave that link below. As you can see, this casualty here is the one who's missing an arm, but this shield will quite nicely hide that when it's on the base. And this guy here, clutching his uh, the stump um, where his hand used to be, I've also got a spare shield for him to put at his feet as well. Now... As you can see, I've also started building up the bases. Now, I use the, uh, the Geek Gaming modeling compound for doing this. I, I find it really, really easy to work with. And for Vercingetorix, there's a lot going on on this model. And as there aren't going to be that many other models, I want him to be quite imposing, standing on a little hillock, commanding his men. Um, I wanted some rocks either side of it so I can do a bit of dry brushing and sort of put some pigments in there. But the majority of what you see on here, Vert, is uh, white. That 
will essentially be soil and I'll put different sort of ground working onto it. I'll dry brush different things. This guy's going to stand at the back here, just down the bottom of the hill a little bit, like he's followed him up the hill, um, waving the standard. And then the Roman will be uh, sort of just further down um, out the way and he'll just be a little piece of sort of interest around the back of the base I'll have to put little stones at the bottom here but overall um, this is quite easy to work with it goes off very quickly um, and I use the leftover part of the mix for doing the Roman base now I haven't done anything quite as dramatic for this I've just created a little raised area at the back that the uh, standard bearer can sort of position himself on and then I'll have the Romans in front of him forming their little sort of shield wall around him to protect him as their sort of comrades fall so i think that'll look pretty dramatic and the composition of it will be pretty easy this guy will just be lying down the front covered by his shield and then we'll have the, the sort of stumpy guy on the corner um the next thing i'm going to do is paint the bases so what i will do i'm going to put these models to one side and i will come back to you once they're on the base and all the base work is done Right, so the last bit of the video you saw was this morning, and uh, this is the end of the evening, and as you can see, I finished doing all the rocks and the uh, the groundwork on the bases. The models are now stuck on them as well. These were uh, these were all undercoated with a, a basic brown DIY uh, paint that I get from B&Q or, or the range, I can't remember, um, and then dry brushed with various mid-tones of brown, green, and greys, especially on the rocks, because rocks are very rarely ever actually grey, um, and and then I just got some pigments and sort of smushed them in. So this has now formed the base for what all the tufts will get stuck onto. So if there is any area showing through, it should look like natural ground. Here you can see the composition of the Roman base, and I'm really pleased with this one. In fact, I think I'm, I'm actually a little bit more pleased with this one and I am the Vercingetorix one. I had a very, very clear idea about what I wanted the Vercingetorix one to look like, and this one has, has been a little bit more ad hoc. Um, I've tried to leave a slight gap in between the Romans there, so you can see the standard bearer at the back, um, but uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. I think he looks like he's uh, just drawn these uh, the last remnants of his legion around him, um, like this chap here has fallen at the front, and then if you can imagine sort of arrows sort of peppered around these guys, I think it will look like a, it will look like a heroic last stand. And now we have the finish models. So all in all, these took me about four or five hours to do. As you can see, I have gone very tuft heavy on here. Now, all of these tufts are from Tajima One, who I really recommend. Um, if you want to try out some different types of tufts and gauze bushes, they have a very wide selection. Now, I've tried to leave sort of um, bare earth and rocks visible where they naturally would be from people scrambling up this little hillock or where sort of like natural bits of stone will fall. But I'm really pleased with how he's come out. But I have also had to sort of, as you can see, do a little bit of blood on the ground as well just to sort of get that idea that that, that Roman has been freshly beheaded um, in front of Vercingetorix's supporters and he's now sort of prepping them up for war and here is the man himself um, I'm really really pleased with how he's come out the shield is all freehand I'm getting a little bit more confident at my freehand um, and uh, yeah I like I said before, I, I wanted to do this sort of little checkered pattern on him, and I think it's come out well. So this will be leading the way for the uh, the Averni, for the Gauls. Um, but let's have a look at the Roman base as well, because this one came out a lot better than I actually expected it to do. So here are the Romans. Um, as you can see, the uh, the casualty figure has been added. I meant to say in the last segment, I when I have casualty figures that are, they're actually dead, I always stick them on after I've applied the grass because they would fall on top of it, um, and that way you you don't have this kind of weird build up over the top of them. As you can see, I've added all these arrows in. I stuck one in one of the shields for the guy on the extreme right, and you know put a spear in the ground as well. Like you know, this really is their last stand. But I'm really really pleased with this i didn't go as heavy with the tufts on this one and that's because i didn't want to sort of draw away from the sort of the idea of deformation i think he's really nice at the back i was a little bit worried that maybe the, these guys at the front would draw sort of detail away from him but i think he's come out really really well and i'm really really pleased with how he looks so um so yeah this will be leading one of the roman legions in our gagovian game and um, you'll probably see him on the channel very soon 
All of the arrows are just stuck into the ground with super glue. I just drill a tiny little hole with a pin vise and then just pop the arrow in with some super glue and that should stay in there. If they do snap off, it's easy enough to just pop back in. Um, but yeah, there we go. Like I say, it's a bit of a bit of an odd video because um, I never planned to actually make it and I was uh, sort of doing it stage by stage, but I hope you guys have found it interesting. Um, I'm really pleased with both of these command bases. My personal favorite is probably the Romans, which uh, I didn't think would be what I'd say. Which one um, Which one do you like the most? Anyway, there will be another Gallic Wars battle report coming on here. We're probably going to use some of the stuff we're using in our Gagovian game. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are all keeping well, and I will uh, be back very soon with another video. In the meantime, look after yourselves, and I will see you all again soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.